my dear students uh, last class we discussed the uh, gradient matrix relation etc now we will discuss about the stress displacement relation as per hooke's law we know that stress is directly proportional to the strain the same thing here also we will apply in finite element method subject stress sigma is equal to stress strain relationship matrix d into strain stress strain relationship matrix d into strain strain epsilon is equal to in last class we discussed that one as the gradient matrix into displacement matrix b into delta by using this particular relation we will calculate the plane stresses what are the plane stresses stress in x direction stress in y direction and stress on x y plane okay so we will calculate that is the shear stress stress in x direction means that is the normal stress normal stress in y direction and shear stress on x y plane okay you have to remember now that is a suppose in plane uh, type of problems the stresses are two types of stresses are there one is the plane stress condition and another one is the plane strain condition these two conditions and the derivations we derived in the first unit itself now <clears throat> by using that particular case if the given problem or given condition is a plane stress condition is there stress is sigma sigma x sigma y tau x y is equal to we will write that d is the as per the plane stress condition here e divided by 1 minus mu square into 1 mu 0 mu 1 0 0 0 one minus mu by 2 b is the gradient matrix yesterday's class we derived that one as a 1 by 2a into beta 1 0 beta 2 0 beta 3 0 0 gamma 1 0 gamma 2 0 gamma 3 gamma 1 beta 1 gamma 2 gamma 2 beta 2 gamma 3 beta 3 and displacement matrix is the u1 v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 where e is the angst modulus it is the property of the material mu is the poisson's ratio it is also property of the material okay by using this particular relation we will calculate the induced stresses in a plane type of problems okay suppose for the given problem is a plane strain condition type of problem is there at that time your stress strain relationship matrix uh, relation becomes a changes the remaining things are same that is a uh, here stress uh, d matrix uh, is e by 1 plus mu into 1 minus 2 mu into 1 minus mu mu 0 mu 1 minus mu 0 0 0 1 minus 2 mu by 2 the remaining things are same so by using the given problem what type of problem they given if the plane stress condition is there we will use the one type of stress strain relationship matrix if plane strain condition is there we will use the another type of stress strain relationship matrix by using that one we will calculate the induced stresses okay and next one is the uh, stiffness matrix for two dimensional element that is here specifically i mentioned for constant triangle element we know the basic relation stiffness matrix relation integral of b transpose d into b into dv dv integral is the if you remove the integral dv is the volume integral of volume area of the plane into thickness i wrote instead of dv a into t <coughs> the remaining things that is the d is the elasticity matrix or constitutive matrix or stress strain relationship matrix d is the gradient matrix is there now a a is the area of the triangular element that is 1 by 2 into 1 x1 y1 1 x2 y2 1 x3 y3 determinant of by using this particular relation we will calculate and here we can easily uh, find the stiffness matrix also and uh, one more thing is the isoparametric representation i think uh, in this particular case uh, you have to identify one of the thing that is a uh, isoparametric what is mean by iso iso means a uh, same that is uh, your displacement relations uh, and uh, your displacement relations and the geometry of the element relations are almost are same if you use in the same manner then that element generally we call as a isoparametric element so here we are considering isoparametric representation suppose our, our cst element is a isoparametric representation element is there at that time here are basically we know that displacement u is equal to n1 u1 plus n2 u2 plus n3 u3 and v is equal to n1 v1 plus n2 v2 plus n3 v3 
here this is this relation it represents the displacement relation but if the if the given problem if it is a isoparametric type of element is there earlier what i said displacement relation and geometry of any element relation both are expressed with the same functions that is that functions is nothing but a shape functions that's why here <coughs> suppose if any point p is there that particular point i represent x is equal to n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 y is equal to n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 just if you observe these two equations and these two equations these combination of equations both are having the same type of function n1 n2 n3 are the shape functions here we use it the respective displacement at a three nodal point here we use it the respective coordinate points for obtaining of x is it right for obtaining of x here we use it the different uh, uh, coordinate points x1 x2 x3 y1 y2 y3 here we use it the displacement values if we represent in the both are same then that element we call as the isoparametric element iso means the same which one is same displacement functions and geometry functions are same then we can write in this particular manner okay now here it's okay then we know the basic property of the shape function sum of the shape functions is equal to unit value n1 plus n2 plus n3 is equal to 1 now let us write n3 is equal to 1 minus n1 minus n2 substitute this particular relation in the coordinate matrix equation x if you substitute that relation now we will get uh, x is equal to what is the x x is equal to x1 minus x3 into n1 plus x2 minus x3 into n2 plus uh, x3 that is if you know the minimum two number of shape function values you can calculate the unknown coordinate point also the same manner similarly y is equal to y coordinate y is equal to y1 minus y3 into n1 plus y2 minus y3 into n2 plus y3 okay like that we can calculate the unknown coordinates also <coughs> now here this is the basic theory con concepts now my dear students if you have any doubts in this theory concepts uh, try to make a one phone call definitely based on your uh, topics i will once again i will take the class and i will explain you okay uh, now we will solve the problems on the same topic on two dimensional elements just one problem is there hmm, just to see for the plane stress element shown in figure evaluate the stiffness matrix assume modulus of elasticity as 210 kN per mm square poisson's ratio mu is equal to 0.25 and thickness of the element 10 mm the coordinates are given in millimeters here the element is mentioned triangular element the coordinate points are the at node 1 is 30,20 at node 2 are 80,20 at node 3 is the 50,100 okay now we have to find the stiffness matrix for obtaining of the stiffness matrix if you observe the cst element the stiffness matrix can be obtained using the expression k is equal to b transpose d into b into a into t first of all you calculate individual all these particular values later you calculate the stiffness matrix a a is the area of the element that is based on this particular coordinate uh, points we can calculate the area of the element half into b into h also otherwise as per the finite element procedure we can calculate area of the triangle a is equal to half into that is a determinant of 1 x1 y1 1 x2 y2 1 x3 y3 that is equal to half determinant of 1 30 20 80 20 50 100 by using this particular relation if you expand this particular term now we will get that the area a is equal to 2000 mm square next calculate the beta 1 and gamma 1 for gradient matrix beta 1 we you know the basic relation y2 minus y3 that is substitute the coordinate values 20 minus 100 that is equal to minus 
beta 2 y3 minus y1 that is equal to 100 minus 20 80 beta 3 y1 minus y2 20 minus 20 that is equal to 0 next gamma 1 x3 minus x2 50 minus 80 minus 30 gamma 2 x1 minus x3 30 minus 50 that is minus 20 next gamma 3 x2 minus x1 that is the 50 okay now substitute all these values in the strain displacement matrix what is the strain displacement matrix strain displacement matrix b is equal to 1 by 2 a beta 1 0 beta 2 0 beta 3 0 0 gamma 1 0 gamma 2 0 gamma 3 gamma 1 beta 1 gamma 2 beta 2 gamma 3 beta 3 that is 1 by 4000 into substitute that particular values that is our area is 2000 and 2 is there here 2a that's why I multiplied with the 2 total is 4000 <coughs> okay you, uh, you you substitute the beta 1 beta 2 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 values now in all this particular case you take a 10 term as a common and if you cancel 10 and this 4010 the remaining b matrix becomes this one suppose if you want to write b transpose b transpose is the 1 by 400 into you write this particular matrix in uh, transpose that is in a uh, vertical manner okay that is the b transpose next here we have to that is a given condition plane stress condition is there <coughs> write down the stress strain relationship matrix or elasticity matrix or constitutive matrix d is equal to e by 1 minus mu square into 1 mu 0 mu 1 0 0 0 1 minus mu by 2 substitute that values Poisson's ratio mu value they given e value they given substitute that values so we got that value as a 56 into 10 to the power of 3 into 4 1 1 0 1 4 0 0 0 1.5 now substitute all these particular matrix one by one suppose uh, i write uh, only right side uh, p transpose i did not substitute first d matrix this is the b matrix then a and thickness is the t is there I multiply these values next here next uh, suppose uh, here I multiply these two matrices if I multiply these two matrices I got uh, sorry uh, sorry I multiplied B transpose and D B transpose and D sorry uh, if I multiply B transpose and D I got this particular matrix now I, I, we have to write this particular one as the B, B matrix, okay, B matrix. Then once again I multiply remaining matrix, uh, two matrices also. Now we will get the 6 by 6 stiffness matrix, this particular size. I think you know the matrix multiplication, that's why uh, I got very fastly, okay. Now we will get this particular matrix. Uh, if you have any doubt, here yeah, try to practice this particular problem whatever the procedure I explain with the same procedure you try to solve definitely you will get the same type of solution okay this is the stiffness matrix next one here one more problem we will solve uh, and now here the nodal coordinates of a triangular element are shown in figure at the point P inside the element the x direction is 3.3 and the shear function n1 is equal to 0.3 determine the shear function n2 n3 and y coordinate of the point p here they given a one triangular element its coordinates 1 2 3 dimension uh, nodal points 1 2 3 its coordinates are 1 comma 2 5 comma 3 4 comma 6 and uh, one of the shear function value n1 also they mention and x coordinate value also they mention 3.3 x coordinate now we have to find the y coordinate and shear functions also okay suppose now we will assume let us assume given element is a isoparametric type of a constant strain triangular element at that time displacement relation and uh, coordinate relation we can express with the same type of equation that's why x is equal to we can write as a x1 minus x3 into n1 plus x2 minus x3 into n2 plus uh, x3 substitute x value and the remaining coordinate values and n1 also 
only n2 is there find out n2 n2 we got the point n2 n3 is equal to here 1 minus n1 minus n2 that is we know that sum of the shape functions n1 n2 n3 n1 plus n2 plus n3 is equal to 1 n3 is equal to you bring the remaining two to the side you get minus so here the value is the point 5 is there n3 now if you get the n1 n2 n3 now you substitute uh, that by equal that relation in y coordinate relation y is equal to y is equal to y1 minus y3 into n1 plus y2 minus y3 into n2 plus y3 now we will get that that one as a 4.2 okay millimeters so like that we will calculate the unknown coordinate values also okay now here next uh, one more problem uh, one more problem calculate the uh, this is the lengthy problem try to understand calculate the element stresses sigma x sigma y tau x y uh, if sigma 1 is and sigma 2 and the principal angles theta p for the CST element as shown in figure, the nodal displacements are the given nodal displacements also u1, u2, u3 is the uh, uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.0005, 0 0.0012 mm respectively, v1, v2, v3 are 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0015, 0 0.0028 mm respectively. And the given triangular element uh, nodal points 1, 2, 3, that is, uh, its uh, coordinates are the 10, 8. 15, 5, next 18, 12. Okay, now we have to find the stresses. Okay, if you want to find the stress relation, sigma is equal to, what is the relation? Sigma is equal to D into B into delta. Okay, D is the constitutive matrix, B is the gradient matrix, and the delta is the displacement matrix. We have to find all these things and then we can calculate the induced stresses or principal stresses. Okay. Now here constitutive matrix. First you calculate the constitutive matrix. Now let us assume the plane stress condition. In the given problem also they mention plane stress condition. Here E by 1 minus mu square into 1 mu 0 mu 1 0 0 0 1 minus mu by 2. Substitute this mu and E values and calculate the constitutive matrix. That is a constitutive matrix is equal to we obtain 56 into 10 to the power of 3, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, Next area of the triangle A is equal to we know that thing half 1x1 by 1, 1x2 by 2, 1x3 by 3. Substitute the coordinates and calculate the area of the triangle. We will get area of the triangle is equal to 22 meters square mm square. Next for obtaining of the gradient matrix, now we calculate the beta 1. Beta 1 is equal to y2 minus y3, 5 minus 12, that is minus 7. Beta 2 is equal to y3 minus y1, 12 minus 8, that is equal to 4. Beta 3 is equal to y1 minus y3, y1 minus y2, sorry, y2, uh, that is 8 minus 5, that is equal to 3. Gamma 1 is equal to x3 minus x2, 18 minus 15, 3. Gamma 2 is equal to x1 minus x3, 10 minus 18, minus 5. Gamma 3 is equal to x2 minus x1, that is 15 minus 10, that is equal to 5. That is strain displacement matrix B is equal to, we know that 1 by 2A into beta 1 0, beta 2 0, beta 3 0, 0 gamma 1, 0 gamma 2, 0 gamma 3, gamma 1, beta 1, gamma 2, beta 2, gamma 3, beta 3. Substitute all these values in this equation. If you substitute, our matrix becomes like this. Okay. Now, here, after obtaining the matrix, now you substitute all. Uh, all the values in sigma. Sigma is equal to, we know that sigma is equal to B in, D into B into delta. So, here first thing I wrote D and B. D is the um, constitutive matrix, B is the displacement matrix, sorry, uh, gradient matrix. Substitute. This is the D is equal to 56 into 10 to the power of 3, 410, 140, 00, 0.5. B is the 1 by 44 into minus 7, 0, 4, 0, 3, 0, 0, 3, 0, minus 8, 0, 5, 3, minus 7, minus 8, 4, 5, 3 into delta. Now here, multiply these two matrices. We will get this one. And now you write delta. What is the delta? U1, V1, U2, V2, U3, V3. 
Okay, right here into 10 to the power of minus 3. So here finally we got that values are the minus 36.4, 14.76, 29.4. What are that one? Normal stress in x direction, normal stress in y direction, shear stress in on xy plane. Okay, xy plane. Now here that is a I wrote that three things. But they are asking the principal stresses. So if you want to calculate the principal stresses, the principal stresses is the first one sigma 1 is equal to, we know that principal stress relation, half sigma x plus sigma y, half of sigma x plus sigma y plus square root of sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus fourth of x y square. Now substitute that values. Whatever the values we got sigma x, sigma y, whatever so substitute that values. If you substitute the values, we will get sigma 1 is equal to 28.15 Newton per mm square. Principal stress. Maximum principal stress. Minimum principal stress. <coughs> Half sigma x plus sigma y minus here. Si square root of sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus 4 tau xy. Substitute that values in this equation. Minus is there here. We will get minus 49.79. And they are asking one more thing. That is the principal angle. Principal angle is equal to theta p is equal to theta p is equal to half tan inverse 2 tau x y by sigma x minus uh, sigma y. That is half. You substitute that value. Those values will get theta p is equal to minus 24.5 degrees. Okay, like that we will solve the problems. Okay, few more problems also there. First of all, try to go through my material. Uh, later I will solve the remaining type of problems. Uh, why? Because if I solve all type of problems at a time, you may get some confusion. That's why now I will stop my class. Okay. Thank you.